Good evening and welcome to Viewpoint. Tonight we'll be looking at relations with Spain and we welcome onto the Viewpoint set the leader of the opposition, Daniel Fetum. Good evening, Mr. Fetum, and thank you for joining us. Good evening, Jonathan. How would you characterise relations with Spain at the moment? Well, I think there is uh, one of the most profound crises in Gibraltarian Spanish relations in living memory, certainly since I've been involved in politics for the last 14 years. You only look, have to look at the number of incursions, record high. Um, the, I mean, this week, we've got, the, we've got Spain trying to exclude us from, from single skies. The frontier queues, when we were in Ronda just this week, there were five-hour queues by some reports, or two-and-a-half-hour queues by others. But two-and-a-half-hour queues are still significant. I think that there, there is uh, some uh, ray of light. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the, the PSOE, for example, its policy in relation to Gibraltar, it's broken rank with the, with, with the Pepe. Its, its policy is different. There are many people who are very sympathetic to Gibraltar, who do not agree in Spain with the policy of the Pepe government. We've seen organisations being formed with trade unionists, with, uh, with businesses, uh, ordinary people on both sides of the frontier criticising the, the policy of the Pepe. I mean, the, the sense that I get when I go to, to Spain on my talks or in debates, and I've been doing it for over a year, is there's an awful lot of people that are critical of the policy of the Pepe government towards Gibraltar, and, and that's why it's important that when you are an advocate for Gibraltar in Spain, that you, that you do so intelligently, and that you're very wary and you're conscious of the audience that you have in front of you. Okay, so that's largely concentrating on politics, which I suppose is what we're going to be doing over the course of the next hour. Uh, what about, you know, sort of economic relations with Spain? What about social relations with Spain? How would you characterize those? Well, there's been a huge knock in economic relations with Spain. I mean, some of the businesses in Spain are reporting a loss of 40 to 50 percent in business. I mean, that's significant. It really is affecting a lot of businesses in Spain. Uh, and, of course, it's affecting people who have to earn their living here in Gibraltar, 10,000 Spaniards that cross every day. That's the message that you've got to take to Spain. The message you've got to take to Spain is it's a futile policy, it's achieving nothing, Actually, what it is, it's like justifying friendly fire. Because what you're doing is, for the sake of damaging the economy of Gibraltar, you don't mind that there's collateral damage in all those Spanish businesses and in all those Spanish citizens that have got to live, that, that have got to earn a living here in Gibraltar. Well, plenty more to discuss in the coming hour. This is usually a topic that many of us have a view on. You can share yours by emailing viewpoint at gbc.gi or by calling 200 79810. I'll also do my best to monitor uh, what's said using the hashtag GBCViewpoint. The ROC's potential exclusion from the European Single Skies measures has hit the headlines again, and we'll ask Mr. Fetum for his thoughts about that a little later. But first, a quick look at what the leader of the opposition has been doing in Spanish cities in recent months. The GSD leader says he has a house in Andalusia and has always enjoyed spending time there. But he says he hasn't crossed the frontier much this past year because of the regularly long queues. He has, however, racked up hundreds of kilometres travelling to deliver a series of talks in Spanish universities and cultural centres this past week in Ronda. Hola, buenas tardes a vosotros que nos acompañáis en Ronda, la Ronda, la ciudad soñada, eh, un, llena de patrimonio, una ciudad llena de historia y que por supuesto nos encanta que, que vengáis a visitarnos y os acogemos con el mayor agrado posible. Daniel Fetum was the first speaker in a series of talks organized by cultural group Mar del Sur entitled Gibraltar, the Great Unknown. El título es La Gran Desconocida porque yo creo que cuando se habla de Gibraltar o habla de que el whisky es muy barato, que la gasolina es muy barata, sin olvidarnos del tabaco, que sí es cierto y que eso es cosa del gobierno erradicarlo, ¿no? Pero aparte de eso, Gibraltar es más. Gibraltar tiene una historia antiquísima, Gibraltar es prehistórica, se encontró el cráneo de Neardental, es Gibraltar con, sobre la Segunda Guerra Mundial tuvo un punto estratégico importantísimo y... 
y tiene una cultura increíble a través de los años. Y entonces es necesario conocerla, por eso decimos la gran desconocida, porque yo creo que de la línea para afuera nadie la conoce. Si acaso en el campo de Gibraltar. Danny Feetham might have chosen not to visit his house in Spain much this past year, but as he himself highlighted, thousands of cross-frontier workers don't have that choice and have to regularly suffer long waits. 10.000 ciudadanos españoles que trabajan todos los días que tienen que cruzar esa frontera para ir a trabajar a Gibraltar y los cientos de negocios que hay en el campo de Gibraltar que están sufriendo una decaída de negocio de un 40 a un 50 por ciento. He elaborated on his message later that evening when he sat next to the president of the PSOE party in Ronda. La política actual es una política represiva y contraria al entendimiento entre los pueblos, que es lo que me parece a mí que viene preconizando Daniel Fitman. Una política muy distinta sería abrir totalmente las puertas de la frontera con Gibraltar y que libremente pudieran entrar y salir cuantos quisieran sin la más mínima limitación. Es algo que no comprendo yo cómo a estas alturas del siglo en que vivimos se mantenga por ningún gobierno. In his talk, Mr. Fitem's verdict on the Partido Popular was similarly damning. He said citizens in the Campo de Gibraltar are suffering as a result of the Foreign Secretary's harsh policies towards the ROC. Si el objetivo es un Gibraltar español, la estrategia actual no es una estrategia inteligente, porque lo único que hace es que el gibraltareño se refugie en una mentalidad de asedio y que incremente un sentimiento anti-español en Gibraltar. La cultura yo creo que es todo y, y, y hacer un acercamiento de la política también es cultura porque es enseñarle a los demás cómo tú piensas, no piensas o deja de pensar. Por lo tanto, aunque es una actividad cultural, nosotros creemos que debe de haber un acercamiento políticamente hablando, no dar un mitin político porque no es lo que va a hacer, sino desde su punto de vista hablar de Gibraltar para que lo conozcan más los rondeños, en este caso. Que nos hemos marcado, yo creo que van a saber apreciar el esfuerzo político, el cometido político. The leader of the opposition says the GSD's long-established policy of engaging with Spain is being put under pressure due to a crisis of relations. But that leads him to think that it's particularly important to engage in dialogue now. Cuando yo abogo, o un español como Álvaro, también a, a, a abogamos o apostamos, por esa postura, incluso en momentos de crisis como lo que estamos viviendo, ni somos traidores a Gibraltar, ni somos traidores a España, ni eh, 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 a nuestras respectivas comunidades. Porque es muy fácil, en este clima que vivimos, de tocar siempre las teclas del nacionalismo. Es lo más fácil del mundo. Es mucho más difícil pero es tener mucha más visión, el tener la valentía política de decir, yo tengo mi postura, tú tienes la tuya, pero debemos concentrarlos no en lo que nos divide, sino en lo que tenemos en común y en lo que nos puede beneficiar mutuamente. So, talking is a good place to start, but talking only gets you so far. Políticamente también tiene que haber una respuesta. Yo creo que esa respuesta se va a producir a partir de noviembre del año que viene y tendrá que ser un gobierno que haga lo mismo que hizo el primer gobierno socialista que abrió la verja de Gibraltar en el momento en que tomó posesión y cambiar radicalmente la política que se está haciendo hoy día y favorecer las inversiones y los proyectos mutuos que favorezcan tanto a Gibraltar como al campo de Gibraltar, que se vería muy beneficiado. Y Gibraltar en alguna medida, pues posiblemente también. Y todo eso lo podíamos hacer fomentando más el diálogo y el entendimiento. La alcaldesa de la línea yo creo que está haciendo una política muy acertada también. Y en ese aspecto iríamos hacia el hermanamiento y no hacia la división ni a ninguna ruptura que a nadie interesa, creo yo. Y la política es el arte de poder hacer, como ha dicho anteriormente Dani, que me ha encantado esa, esa frase, y me quedo con ella. ¿no? Los políticos tenemos que estar al servicio de los ciudadanos y de las ciudadanas, y desde luego del Partido Socialista, no vamos a dejar ni un minuto de trabajar con esa, con esa opción. Y hay que preguntar 
¿Cuál es el objetivo de la, de la diplomacia española actual? Mira, yo espero dedicar toda mi vida a asegurar que Gibraltar permanezca británico y de, que, y de que el modo de vida británico permanezca en Gibraltar. Siempre, no dejando de comprender de que hay muchísimas, muchísimas costumbres españolas en la cultura gibraltareña que son costumbres muy, muy bonitas y de que yo, la verdad es de que me siento muy a gusto y los gibraltareños también se sienten muy a gusto con esas costumbres. Much of what Danny Fitum says in his talks in Spain resonates with comments made by Fabian Picardo at the United Nations and two Spanish media. Pero eh, siempre con la voluntad de sentarnos a hablar para tratar fo de focalizar aquello que tenemos en común y no lo que nos separa, para hacer hincapié en lo que nos permita progresar junto para nuestro mutuo beneficio. La política... Tú puedes hablar de los principios, se puede hablar de, de muchísimas cosas en la política, pero la política, a fin y al cabo, es de avanzar los intereses del de ciudadano. That's the message. But what of the messenger? The mayor of La Línea, Gema Araujo, snubbed the leader of the opposition in July by refusing to take part in a public debate with him in San Roque. So, what do Ronda's PSOE politicians think of the messenger? Estupenda. La verdad que que Daniel, Dani, como me gusta llamarlo, tiene una política centrista, tiene una política de de unir más que de destrozar, ¿no? La verdad es que para nosotros es muy positiva y tenemos muchísimos puntos de coincidencia. Hemos estado hablando con él de Gibraltar y de muchísimas cuestiones y me encanta cómo una persona tiene la filosofía de salir fuera a vender su tierra, cómo el trabajo constante es digno de felicitar porque no toda la gente, no todos los políticos entiende ese trabajo externo que hay que tener para que Gibraltar esté en el lugar. Concretamente en la reunión que hemos tenido y los temas que hemos comentado Nosotros lo hemos visto prácticamente una postura valiente, con la mano tendida y que merece una respuesta por parte del gobierno español mucho mejor de la que está teniendo. Porque desde luego el discurso de Dani es fantástico, Lleve, quiere llevar a Gibraltar donde corresponde ¿no? y para ello se está creando alianzas externas muy conscientes de lo que ello conlleva y por supuesto un gran trabajo el que está haciendo nuestro compañero Dani. Posteriormente irá a Marbella, irá a Málaga y yo le deseo que vaya a muchos puntos de España y que su trabajo sea reconocido por sus compatriotas en Gibraltar y que le den el voto en las próximas elecciones, por supuesto. <risa> Apologies, our subtitles seem to run out of steam there, so if uh, you don't speak Spanish, uh, the PSOE politicians who we spoke to praise Mr. Fitum <coughs> for being a centralist, for being very positive, for sharing many of the PSOE's ideals, and uh, he was also tr uh, you also praise Mr. Fitum for travelling with the Gibraltar message, and, um, and we heard you know, the PSOE's view that uh, Gibraltar and you deserve a, a better response in that regard. You made a good impression on the PSOE in, in Ronda. Well, I'm generally very well received when I go to Spain um, because, as I say, uh, I'm very conscious of the audience that I'm addressing. And therefore, although I'm always firm in my position, in other words, I always make it clear because I do that, uh, look, I've got red lines in relation to sovereignty, jurisdiction, control of the territory, waters, airspace, and I defend the traditional Gibraltar line. I do recognize that in Spain there are also red lines and I, you know, and I recognize that, but that there is uh, ample space in between those red lines where a lot could be achieved. And when you t start talking to people about a positive vision, when you start really sort of uh, talking from their own point of view as well and making them realize that actually this policy by the Pepe's is achieving nothing. It's not a policy that is benefiting or the ordinary man in the street. I mean, it has absolutely no logic at all. Then people do respond. What I don't do is go to Spain in order to um, deliver a message that might, be, that might make me popular here in Gibraltar. In other words, I don't make statements that, uh, that might uh, be interpreted as, uh, as offensive to Spain. And look, you know, that sometimes that is popular here in Gibraltar as well. I mean, comparing Spain, for example, to a tin pot uh, 
uh, uh, dictatorship. That might be popular with a certain sector of, uh, of Gibraltarian electorate, but it's not the right thing to do if you really want to be a good advocate in Spain. You've said that one of the um, consequences of Margallo's um, sort of stance on Gibraltar and his harsh policies towards the rock is that there's been a rise of nationalism on both sides of the frontier. Um, I'd like to ask you a few questions on that, but firstly, how does that manifest and what do you mean by that statement? Well, I think that uh, on the Spanish side, obviously, there were a lot of incidents, um, uh, certainly last year after the, after the blocks were laid, for example, that, that were quite violent. I mean, there were a number of uh, uh, cars that had been burnt. Uh, there were a number of statements from people as well and from organizations in Spain that uh, took their cue from the Pepe government, which were absolutely unhelpful to the situation. And you, and you have highlighted I, there the artificial blocks as being the, the catalyst for that. Well, I think that post the artificial blocks, whether it's the catalyst or it's not the catalyst, and I'm not suggesting for one moment that any of that is justified uh, as a consequence of the laying of the blocks, absolutely not. Um, but that there were incidents uh, uh, subsequent to, to, to that. And of course, here in Gibraltar, look, I mean, you know, I've been at the sharp end of a lot of nationalist comments from Gibraltar because people uh, don't understand what my role or what my, what my work, or it's misinterpreted here, what my work in Spain is. Now, I go to Spain in order to advocate on behalf of Gibraltar, to dispel a lot of myths that there are about Gibraltar, to, uh, to, to, to make people see that the um, policies of the Pepe are really misguided. But of course, here in Gibraltar, it's very easy for political reasons, and particularly in a situation... Easy for what? For... Well, it's very easy, particularly in a situation where, where uh, you know, there is a rise in nationalism as a consequence of, of, of these tensions. For, for your position to be misinterpreted and for you to be uh, criticised just simply for going to Spain and actually talking about dialogue. And do you think that there's been, um, you, you said there's been a rise of uh, nationalism in Gibraltar in the past year or so. Um, how has that manifested? Have we had, for example, I mean, not, not to my knowledge, but um, have we had, in, to your knowledge, an increase in vandalism towards Spanish property, no. cars, or anything of the sort? No, 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 no. Look, I'm not suggesting that there has been any kind of incidents of that nature, but undoubtedly there has been an increase in nationalism as a consequence of... So it's discourse mainly. It's yes, people it, sort it, of it were is. saying things absolutely, that are quite... Absolutely, absolutely. But, it, 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 look, it's in moments of crisis such as this one that there is a duty on people like me who genuinely believe on, in dialogue to actually say, hang on a minute, what Spain is doing is wrong, undoubtedly. But the only way in which we can progress is through dialogue. It's got to be properly structured dialogue. That's why, you know, I, my, the, my party's policy is a return to the tripartite talks. But dialogue is the only way forward. Look, you know, even the, the Cordova agreements that have been criticised here in Gibraltar because, it's, because they haven't been implemented fully on the Spanish side, and I accept some of those criticisms, but actually that was one of the greatest achievements by a Gibraltarian government, the tripartite talks, and the goal of our agreements. Now, and how, how, how was that? How do you understand Jonathan, hang those? A the, well, those... Hang on a minute. How, how was that achieved? It was achieved through dialogue. That's how it was achieved. I don't, well, nobody. I think there's there's uh, uniformity in that respect. I think both political parties, both political uh, bodies, if you like, the GSLP Liberals and the opposition, uh, agree that dialogue is the way forward. Um, but, but hang on a minute. I don't. But there is a but there is a difference here. Well, there let, let, let me ask you firstly before we move on to the differences. What do you understand to be uh, the criticisms of the Cordova Agreement, which you say was was you know so important for Gibraltar, such an achievement? Well, the criticisms from from a, from a Gibraltar point of view, well, that the that you the can't trust Spain. That you can't that effectively that if it was e if, if Spain is uh, is able to just simply ignore the Cordova Agreements in the way that it has because let's face it, it hasn't implemented the Cordova agreements, that therefore Spain cannot be trusted in the future to enter into any other kind of agreement. And I understand the argument, and look, it has some force, but the alternative to that is to just simply turn your backs to Spain and not talk to them and just switch the lights off. And I'm not prepared to accept that. Mm -hmm. I'm a person who believes in dialogue with Spain. That is the way forward, and that is what we've got to do. We have got to try and persuade Spain through cogent, forceful, rational, intelligent arguments that the policy of the Pepe government goes absolutely nowhere. And indeed, 
that the correct and the proper approach is Moratino's policy. And that's why, you know, in, in the Spanish press, I, there was a, an editorial in a, in a Spanish newspaper not long ago that said that I defend Moratino's uh, as if I were an activist of the PSOE. Well, actually, of course I defend Moratino's because I think that he was a politician that had vision and his policy towards Gibraltar not only benefited his own people, the Spaniards, but it also uh, benefited Gibraltarians. Was it not under his watch, though, that the waters off Europa Point were designated Spanish? Well, look, there are always going to be problems with any Spanish, any government of any political persuasion. And the reality is that, the, the, that relations between Gibraltar and Spain, it's, it's often a management issue. When you're in government, you have to accept that, that there may be situations where, for example, there are going to be flashpoints at the border, I mean, there have been flashpoints at the border, there have been queues under a PSOE government as well as the Pepe. It's, but it's a management issue. You've got to accept there are going to be points of crisis, but you've got to manage relations intelligently so that at the end of the day, you keep those crisis points to a bare minimum. Yes, of course, they designated and they were sneaking the way they what, did it. What, what, but, yes, sorry, sorry beg fin your finish what you're saying. They, they were sneaky and that was Moratinos? Yeah, well, yes. But at the end of the day, the tripartite talks and the Cordova agreements, the, the tripartite talks in particular, which is a process mm. under which the, the, the Cordova agreements were agreed, mm. that is the correct approach for Gibraltar-Spanish relations. And that was a massive advancement for Gibraltar and indeed, I believe, for ordinary people in Spain but we've too. Seen, we've seen pictures of uh, recent frontier queues. Um, you know, the frontier situation didn't improve as a result of the Cordova agreement, did it? Well, it did. I'm sorry, I don't accept that. I, I think that from 2007 to 2010, relations between Gibraltar and, Sp and Spain were as normalized as they have ever been in the history of Gibraltar politics. There is absolutely no doubt about it that post-2010, there was then a... There was then a uh, Deterioration. A, 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 well, actually, there were changes within the Spanish government and as a consequence of those changes within Moratino the Peso, stepped within, down. And Moratino stepped down, as a consequence of those changes, there was then a, a some politicians within the Spanish government, the PSOE, started to get cold feet. Mm. That's why I admire somebody like Moratino, because at the end of the day, you know, politics is very easy to look at politics in terms of a cost-benefit analysis. Mm -hmm. Well, look, what is it going to cost me? to be positive in relation to Gibraltar? What is it going to cost me to be positive in relation to Spain, looking at it from my perspective? Yeah. It might cost me because there are people here in Gibraltar who really m much rather turn their backs on Spain. But well, I don't believe that that is the correct uh, that, I think, that is I think the you've correct, made that clear, uh, but what uh, would you say to a critic watching this who's heard you praise Moratinos, um, who's seen you go to Ronda, among other places, and um, you know appear very cosy with a PSOE party, is there an increased risk that you might be labelled fairly or unfairly, what many would term a palomo? But why? Look, if I, I go to Spain and every speech that I deliver there, I tell people very clearly, I am going to dedicate my life and my political life for Gibraltar to remain British and the British way of life to be preserved in Gibraltar. I will not give an inch on sovereignty, on jurisdiction, on control of the water, airspace, territory. But I believe in dialogue. That's nothing. I, I'm not a Palomo as a consequence of that. It's just that there has to be a positive vision in relation to conducting your relations with Spain. That's all. I mean, you know, so it doesn't make me. That's, that's essentially what I also try and uh, project there from a Spanish point of view. You're not a bad Spaniard simply because you want dialogue with Gibraltar in the same way as I'm not a bad Gibraltarian because I have a positive vision in terms of relations with Spain. There's a few questions here coming in on email. It's viewpoint at gbc.gr. You can call 200 79810 if you'd like to have your say. Uh, let's go to John first, who says, uh, if the GSD were to win the next election, what would you do differently to improve relations with Spain if it were under a Pepe government? Because, of course, there are elections in Spain also in the next year or so. Well, look, I would continue doing what I've been doing for a year and a half, and that is sticking to the position whereby the tripartite talks is the way forward. If there is a proposal to move away from the tripartite talks, well, look, we will look at that at the appropriate juncture. 
but advocating dialogue. That's the way, that's the way forward. Look, I can't force the Pepe government to basically come and talk to Gibraltar or to engage in a process of dialogue. I can't do that. But what I can do is try and persuade uh, the Spanish nation, Spanish citizens, that the policy of the Pepe government is not the correct policy, not only for Gibraltar, mm. but for them. That is why I have advocated for a very long time, even before I became leader of the opposition, of having a joint strategic policy, government and opposition, of how we are going to take a joint message to Spain in the newspapers, in influential clubs. You have proposed debated. this to Fabian Pigardo well, and have, he I has have made so it, far I not have, taken it up. I have made that position very, very clear both in Parliament and, out, and outside it. And I am prepared to sit down with Mr Picardo tomorrow, next week, whenever it's convenient to him, in order to discuss that. Look, it may not have an effect in the short term but it may have an effect in the medium to long term. But, Mr. And I think that, but, but this is an important point, please, if I may be allowed to, be, to develop it. What we've got to do here in Gibraltar is actually lead by example, Fabian and myself, of actually uh, uh, leading by example in the sense that having those joint strategies so that in future other chief ministers, other leaders of the opposition can also follow our example because we may not be able to persuade enough of Spanish opinion, uh, public opinion to say, for example, apply pressure on the Pepe government. But maybe if you do it on a sustainable basis over 10, 15 years, well, that may be a different story, but you've got to start somewhere. Okay, you've made your point. We've got Simi Herbert, who's on the line and waiting patiently to ask a question or put across your point of view. Simi, good evening. Hello. Hi, your question of viewpoint, please. Hey, it's to my friend Danny Boy there. <laughs> Danny Boy. Yes, I, I call him Danny Boy. Um, I, um, he's just said that um, he that he likes the way the Moratinos way, but doesn't he remember that when Moratino was up the road with Sir Peter Caruana, that he openly said he verdad español quite openly. And um, how can you have a dialogue with a person like that? Because I will not invite a person into my house knowing that he wants to take my house away from me. Thank you. Thank you, Simi. Simi, thank you very much for that question. Well, the answer is very simple. I do not get offended when a Spanish politician says, I believe that he verdad español. Well, look, Gibraltar is British. That's the, that's the end of the story. If you believe that Gibraltar is Spanish, well, as long as you don't have a policy of punishment, which is the policy of the Pepe towards Gibraltar, which is abhorrent, well, look, words don't hurt me at all. Why should the fact that Moratino says or has a position, Gibraltar Español, actually deter me from trying to sit down with him, parking those issues of sovereignty and concentrating on a, on a political space in between those red lines that I can use for the benefit of my own people here in Gibraltar? Absolutely not. It's madness, Simi to basically just simply say that because somebody, because a politician in Spain says Gibraltar Español, to turn your backs on them and say, I am not talking to them. That is not my position. And look, and at the end of the day, if that is going to be the political dividing line between myself and my party and the government, well, so be it. I mean, I'll take my chances with the electorate. What I'm not going to do is actually lie to the electorate or take a position which I believe is dishonest. Quite a few questions coming in by email, and um, we'll also take more calls on 200 79810. We're discussing relations with Spain, but Viewpoint with Danny Feetham is going to take a very short break. We'll be right back.